गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स साई राम एंड वेलकम बैक सो हव आर यू ऑल आई होप दैट यू ऑल आर फिट एंड फाइन एट होम ग्रेट सो स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड जोग्राफी चैप्टर नंबर फोर्थ दैट इज क्लाइमेट नाउ इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस क्लास नाइन्थ पॉलिटिकल साइंस चैप्टर नंबर थर्ड दैट इज इलेक्टोरल politics so let's begin so students in chapter 2 we have seen that in a democracy it is neither possible nor necessary for people to govern directly so the most common form of democracy in our times is for the people to govern through their representatives in this chapter we will look at how these representatives are elected so we begin by understanding why elections are necessary and useful in a democracy so we try to understand how electoral competition among parties serve the people then go on to ask what makes an election democratic so basically the basic idea here is to distinguish democratic election from non democratic election but before that let's first understand what is election now just tell me what is election it is a mechanism by which people can choose their representatives at regular intervals and change them if they wish to do so so in simple word we can say that an election is a contest between different political parties in order to get people's support clear now next is electoral politics now let's study about the electoral politics so what is electoral politics it is a field where we elect our representatives by voting them the more the votes so the more chances to win the election clear it is a field where we elect our representative by voting them so the more the votes the more the chances to win the election okay so in this video we are going to discuss these topics first is why do we need a election second topic what makes an election democratic and third topic is is it good to have political competition so let's begin with the first why election so let's understand with the help of the example of your class now let's say students you have 10 students in a class and teacher want to elect class leader right you have a 10 students in a class and teacher wants to elect class leader from your from those 10 students now what the teacher can do is ask the 10 students to sit together and then find out who would be a best fit for the position that means for the class leader so this is the direct contest we say, we can say that this is a direct contest or direct election now all the students can sit together right have their opinion have their views about individual candidates they can discuss the various things and finally they choose a one single person as a class leader so students here that's a kind of a very simple case right but if we talk about our nation 
the entire nation its population is more than billions now what would happen is like you have a huge group of people bringing them all together is a difficult task right then asking them all together to accumulate it at one place at one time and discuss the things together is definitely a difficult task so for that so for that you have a kind of election takes place now those election or electoral politics is what we would understand in this chapter here now okay let's take one more example of state assembly election which was held in haryana in 1987 right state assembly election in haryana uh, held in 1987 so at that time the state had been ruled by a congress party at that time the state had been ruled by a congress party since 1982 and at that time chaudhry devi lal chaudhry devi lal he was an opposition leader he was an opposition leader and he led a movement in haryana called nyay yudh or struggle struggle for justice and he formed a new party called lok dal so chaudhry devi lal he was an opposition leader he led a movement called nyay yudh and he formed a new party called lok dal so his party joined other opposition parties and formed alliance so his party joined or we can say formed alliance against the congress in the election in haryana now during the election campaigning time devi lal promised or he said that if his party win the election so his government would waive the loans of the farmers and small business men so students what would happen is when you have a election takes place so first what would happen is you would have one party that bring out their party agenda right first uh, you would have one party that bring out their own agenda but that election is not one sided there is also another party that would have also their own agenda right so both the parties would contest election then both of them release their manifesto and they would lay down some promises so devi lal also promised that this would be the first action of his government what his government would waive the loans of the farmers and small businessmen so at that time in haryana people were unhappy with the existing government they were also attracted by devi lal's promise so when the elections were held in haryana they voted overwhelming in favor of lok dal and its alliances so in this election in this election lok dal and its partners in this election lok dal and its partners won 76 out of 90 seats in the state assembly lok dal alone won 60 seats and thus had a clear majority in the assembly so the congress could win only 5 seats so once the election results were announced the newly elected member of legislative assembly that means MLAs of Lok Dal chose Devi Lal Devi Lal as their leader so as soon as he became the chief minister his government issued his government issued a government order 
waiving the outstanding loans of his small farmers agriculture laborers and small businessmen so his party that means the devi lal's party ruled the state for 4 years but the next is elections were held in 1991 this time his party did not win popular support the congress win the election and formed the government now just tell me students do most leaders fulfill their election promises basically during election time as i told you most of the leaders make many big promises like the devi lal to the peoples or the voters to win their support and vote but however after the elections the political leaders forget their promises and most of them do not fulfill their election promises so we can say that elections are like exams where politicians and parties know if they have passed or failed now why do we need election as we know that elections take place regularly in any democracy right and we noted in chapter 1 that there are more than 100 countries how many 100 countries in the world in which elections take place to choose people's representatives but we also read that elections are held in many countries that are not democratic but why do we need election let us try to imagine a democracy without election we can't a rule of the people is possible without any elections as i said if all the people can sit together every day and take all the decisions but as we have already seen in chapter 2 this is not possible in any large community like india nor it is possible for everyone to have the time and knowledge to take decisions on all matters so therefore in most democracies people rule through their representatives so why do we need elections election is a process by which the citizens of a democracy select or choose their representatives and change them if they wish to do so so we can say that election play a very vital role in a democracy first how in the election the voters make many choices elections empowers the voters to make the following choices first they can choose who will make laws for them basically elections are exceptionally important in democracy without elections democratic government cannot be set up it has been rightly said no election no democracy second is they can choose who will form the government and take major decisions so through elections alone the people can rid get rid of a cruel and unpopular government and in its place they can elect a new popular government they can choose the party whose policy will guide the government so it is through elections alone that an effective control can be maintained on the executive elections can lead to changes in the policies of the government so all the citizens in a modern democracy cannot run the administration right only their representatives only their representatives can do it for them so in order to choose such representatives the elections are mandatory clear all the citizens in a democracy modern democracy cannot run the administration 
only their representatives can do it for them so in order to choose such representative the elections are mandatory clear now okay now the next topic is what makes an election democracy so first of all elections can be held in many ways all democratic countries hold elections but most non democratic countries also hold some kind of elections now how do we distinguish elections or we can say that how do we distinguish democratic elections from any other election so we have discussed this question briefly in chapter 2 remember we discussed many examples of the countries where elections are held but they can't really be called a democratic elections so let us recall what we learned there and start with a simple list of the minimum conditions of a democratic elections so what makes an election democratic first everyone should be able to choose their own representatives this means that everyone should have one vote and every vote should have equal value clear this means everyone should have one vote and every vote should have equal value now the second is different parties and candidates should be free to contest election and should offer some real choice to the voters there should be something to choose from so parties and candidate they should be free to contest election and should offer some real choice to the voters now the third one is the choice should be offered at regular interval so election must be held regularly after every few years why because election should be held regularly it provide incentives it provide incentives to the political parties and leaders second thing is they know that if they raise issues that people want to raised so it would make them popular and increase their chances of victory in the next election now third but if they fail to satisfy the voters with their work so they will not be able to win again clear now the next one is fourth one the candidate preferred by the people should get elected and the fifth one is election should be conducted free and fair manner where people can choose as they really wish so these might look like very simple and easy conditions but there are many countries where these are not fulfilled so in this chapter we will apply these conditions to the elections held in our own country to see if we can call these democratic elections okay now is it good to have political competition first of all elections mainly refers political competition and this competition takes various forms now the most obvious form is the competition among political parties at the constituencies level at the constituency level it takes the form of competition among several candidates if there is no competition then elections will become pointless but is it good to have a political competition so clearly so clearly an electoral competition has many demerits and also some merits so first one is it create a sense of disunity and factionalism in every locality 
I think uh, you would have heard of people complaining of party politics in your locality. Second thing is different political parties or we can say that candidates or leaders often level uh, use many dirty tricks, unfair means and even put false allegation against one another. So because of the dirty politics tactics adopted by the politicians, many good people do not enter in the politics. So there is a pressure to win the elections and this does not allow sensible long term policies to be formulated. So first one is it create disunity and factionalism develop. Second parties and candidates use dirty tricks to win the election. So there is a pressure to win election. So this does not allow sensible long term policies to be formulated. In spite of above demerits, our constitution's maker opted for free competition. First, regular electoral competition provide incentives to the political leaders. And if they raise, we can say that if they raise issues so that people want to be raised, their popularity and chances of victory will increase and the last one is they did so because this system works better in the long run so in an ideal world all political leaders know what is good for the people and are motivated only by a desire to serve them now the following picture shows the countries who have adopted democracy and has benefited. So that's it for today. Students, we will continue this chapter in next video also. Till then bye, take care and keep learning.